Okay, so good morning, uh, uh, everyone, and welcome to our first science webinar. Uh, in this first uh, edition, we have the the pleasure to have the talks from Sergio Bantano from Pasteur Institute from Montevideo and Teresa Soares from Federal University of Pernambuco here in Brazil. Uh, so uh, this this obviously. Thank for everyone that, that, that is, that's here watching in this morning, and especially thanks to our two uh, researchers that will talk. Uh, this will be a small talk, about 15 minutes for each one of the of, uh, of them, Sergio and Teresa, and then we, we will open for a discussion and for questions. You can make your questions and comments here on YouTube. You, if you look to the right side of the of the video, there is this message place where you can put any comment, and then we can add these comments here to the uh, screen. So, thank you again for everyone. So, please, Sergio, you can start, and then Teresa will, will talk. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Rafael. Uh, I think you you must be seeing a PowerPoint presentation now, is right? Can you hear me? I'm not getting any feedback. Uh, Rafael, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so, and you can see my, my screen. Yeah, yeah, I, I already shared your screen. So we are all looking at your screen right now. Okay, perfect. So thank you very much, uh, Rafael, for uh, hosting this and uh, everybody for being there. Um, just uh, as Rafael just said that uh, it's going to be just a small presentation. Uh, while preparing this, I realized that we don't really have much uh, quantitative data about this. So um, please forgive me. It's going to be just a personal view of my memories on, on this thing. Um, essentially, the, the, the story started in, a, in a, I think it was a, a conference in, um, in Foz de Iguazu uh, in 2014, probably, uh, we, where we first met with a lot of people and we really have a nice dinner and um, and then we started to, to think about the, the idea of organizing a conference uh, only for, for South America, not because of something that uh, we believe that we're kind of elite, but just uh, try to make focus on, on things as we do and, and try to get to know better each other. And uh, by that time, and, and the, the next few slides are going to be the same that I showed in the, in the first uh, meeting we had. Uh, this paper well, it was not exactly a paper, but there was uh, this news in, in, in Nature that came up. Uh, it's uh, um, a presentation, a manuscript from 2014, which of course is going to be very old, but uh, it's quite interesting. I mean, if you try to look at that, um, uh, it's, it's an analysis of, uh, of publications in, uh, in South America. And by the time I did the same, I very um, uh, elementary level, I did the same uh, kind of analysis. Uh, remember, this is uh, all data, as you can see here. Just looking at, at the EC Web of Science for molecular simulations and the, the, the country name, and what came up uh, in the in the moment was uh, something that you can see here: uh, the number of papers published uh, by uh, by country, and I think they are only the ones that were supposed to assist to the meeting in 2015. Um, yes, uh, Sergio, I yes? believe that you, uh, you're not sharing the presentation, but only the uh, the first slide remains. Oh, uh, okay. Let me just, I will try, I will stop the screening and uh, start all over. No problem. It's our first time doing this, so technical issues will be will be okay. Uh, okay. Uh, 
Can you see the screen now? There is a map of South America with, uh, it says South America by the numbers. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. We can okay. see the, the graphic then, yeah. Okay, so this is what I was saying. Uh, again, this is uh, a uh, relatively old uh, paper now, but still, if you want to take a look at that, um, I think it's still interesting. Um, this is just, uh, the, it's, I think it's only two or three pages of um, mostly infographics um, that this uh, was, uh, I mean, th that was uh, the paper. So I was saying that uh, I did the same uh, just using molecular simulation and the country name. And uh, uh, Rafael, we are now seeing a different uh, screen? Actually, no. So, wow. Uh, we are looking, yeah, we are seeing the, uh, not the, the, the presentation, only the, how can I say the? Okay, the, the so. Time. Um, oh, this is a problem. So apparently it's not uh, passing through the slides. Um, I don't know how to solve that. Uh, just, okay, we can, um, it's gonna be a problem. Uh, okay, I will try and so you now you're seeing the, um, the screen, in, not in presentation mode, right? Yeah, we're seeing the PPT file, so perhaps you can just okay. We pass by. we can yes, we can go through the slides in this way, uh, but for one that it's things that are covered, but we will manage. So uh, this is what I was saying. Um, if you do a search using uh, molecular simulation and the country name, this is the number of papers uh, that you see. Uh, uh, I think, and you, you cannot uh, see the scales, but this number of, of papers, uh, country, which is identified by the flags, and uh, this is the maximum number that each graph uh, reaches. Uh, and then I want to see how many papers did we have published um, in common. I mean, if you used, for instance, in this case here, uh, Argentina and Brazil as affiliation. Um, and still you see that the numbers are, are quite reduced. I mean, the, the, again, the seven here is the height of this, uh, the highest bar um, in, I think it should be in 2013 or, or 12. Um, and so this was kind of the idea of, of uh, putting together something that uh, could uh, bring the, the opportunity to, uh, to have a common uh, space to share information and um, I got that something that the, the string jar is full. I don't know what it means. Oh yeah, uh, that was me because uh, just saying guys, if we're trying to, to enter in the string yard link, we are already full. So you have to uh, okay. make comments on YouTube and then I can put the comments here live in the, in the screen. Perfect. Um, so this was kind of the beginning of the story. And we organized in, um, now I will try to uh, to go to presentation mode. Can you see a map and a picture with, uh, with people? Yes. Okay. So uh, we organized in, in 2015 uh, in Montevideo a uh, workshop that we call Workshop of South American PIs on Molecular Simulation. This was organized with money and I think money is always of course an issue and I think it's something important to understand. Um, was organized with money from um, uh, from our institute, I mean the, the Institute Pasteur here, and some collaboration that we got from the FOSEM, which is the uh, Fund for Structural conversions in the Mercosur. Um, I'm obviously translating, and it's a kind of an interesting experience because it was the first time. And this this is a um, an organization between just only within the Mercosur, um, and there is a kind of a chapter for for science. And I think it was the, the first time that uh, money was granted for science, and there was a small component of that grant that was devoted to, uh, to organization of conferences and courses. So what we did in the moment was to organize uh, something we call the op an open lab 
uh, course for for students in South America, and after that we have this three days meeting in in Montevideo. Um, this is the picture you can see younger faces of uh, some of us. Um, the the outcome of uh, of the the meeting was that uh, we had the, the opportunity to 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 show what we we were doing in our groups. Uh, we gathered 24 PIs from Argentina, Brazil, uh, Chile, and uh, Uruguay. Uh, we created the mailing list, which is actually a Google group, something that uh, Guillermo um, uh, opened, and uh, I think he and myself are administrators uh, right now. And we also, on the flight, created a useless web page, which I think now is down. And we never actually used it because we never made it to um, uh, to obtain the, the, all the, da the data from uh, all the participants. Um, also happened that time that we ended the meeting with this. Uh, you're now seeing, Rafael, please help me up. Um, you're seeing a document signed with, uh, I mean, some uh, letters and, and signatures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are seeing the, the okay. picture of two of us. And yeah. Okay, and now there is. Um, you can see minutes of the workshop of uh, South American PIs and market simulations. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so with I mean it's a, a bit longer, but essentially the idea was then uh, to agree on the creation of the virtual collaborative institute named South American Initiative for um, uh, for molecular simulations, uh, with the idea of uh, fostering collaborations uh, for joint research and educational projects. And this was the the first meeting. Now I think I will go to uh, not presentation mode. Um, you are seeing now a different page, uh, Rafael. Yes, the CCS workshop. Okay, fine. So this was um, uh, yet another meeting one year after organizing at the Unicamp in Campinas, Brazil. Um, and you can see, well, we made it to to put some uh, actually you not know, we uh, was I think uh, Munir Skaff who made it to put some money together uh, to organize this. Uh, this is then the, what you see in, on top is the the number of uh, speakers. But uh, the difference with the first edition, we had also uh, students and the poster sessions and uh, other people who were not speakers uh, and, and involved in that. And uh, I think it, what this is, you can see in, in both at uh, the bottom, uh, it's really true. I mean, sometimes we when write the, the, the reports, is kind of sent that, that we write down. But um, this is that it was an important way to promote scientific exchange and contribute to the integration of researches. And it was actually true. I mean, I, I, we met uh, some with some people that um, eventually ended up in, in, in some collaborations. Uh, I will just go briefly through that in the in the next one. Um, on whoops, sorry. Uh, this was 2016. Now in 2018, we create we made another um, uh, another meeting uh, in Montevideo. It was pretty much the same uh, kind of um, of organization on the on the first one. Uh, the important thing is here we got funding from the ICTP, the International Center for Theoretical Physics, for the organization of this. Again, we organized an open lab um, course during a week, and during the weekend we have uh, the meeting. Uh, interesting thing is now we uh, got people from uh, Ecuador and uh, Colombia. There is another star here in Bolivia. Actually, nobody came from Bolivia, but uh, this is... Um, from the, there is a researcher who's uh, from Bolivia, but now it's in in Germany. Uh, who also um, um, we met almost by chance, but um, is also part of the of the um, of the mailing list. Um, so you see that uh, after that we have kind of people participating in this initiative um, in most of the countries. I mean, there's nobody from Paraguay, Peru. Uh, or Venezuela and the, the, the Guyanas, but um, I think it's kind of a, a good representation. Um, something won't show up, is, but uh, in, and it, it will be appeared in the in, in the next two. Uh, okay, so 
if you look at that, I mean, the, the, what happens is that we started with the meet with the previous meeting in Foz de Iguazú, but then we started with this in 2015, 16, uh, 18, and there was a, another meet a meeting organized in Foz de Iguazú again, uh, which obviously was postponed by because of the pandemic. But uh, I, when just trying to prepare the thing, I realized that uh, we had like four almost four meetings in, in, in five years, which is quite a, um, a, a bit of, uh, of interaction for uh, something which is a kind of a self-organized crowd. I mean, there is no uh, organizative um, uh, um, uh, schemes. I mean, there are no presidents or, 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 or whatever. Uh, it's something that we just do whenever we feel that we have uh, the opportunity to, to get money for, money for this. Um, the outcome of this in initiative is uh, essentially we have about 50 groups in, in six uh, countries. Um, again, this the, actually I should write seven countries. This is because of uh, the, the, the story I told you about Bolivia. Uh, something which is, uh, I think, extremely interesting is um, uh, there was a, a special issue in, in JSIM, which um, will be the topic of uh, Teresa's uh, presentation, so I won't add much more than that. And very recently, we created uh, an account, uh, and this was done by uh, Bruno Horta and, and the YouTube channel through which you are now seeing the presentation uh, was created also by Rafael who's hosting the, the meeting now. And then from a very personal point of view, ah, wow, well, uh, okay. Um, I just tried, was trying to remember what happens uh, after that. And in my case only, uh, I think I made like over 15 visits. Either way, I mean, me going to somewhere or, or people uh, from my group going, going to somewhere or people from South America coming to Montevideo. Um, I mean, in conferences, uh, school, uh, PhD thesis that we have been uh, reviewing, um, in, again, in both both ways. Um, we made it to write and publish two papers, and we have three more in preparation with different groups. That um, is an interaction that essentially came out uh, out of this, uh, of this initiative. Uh, we made it also to participate in two computer time grinds um, between Brazil and Uruguay. I mean, we were co-applicants uh, to, um, uh, to um, uh, computer grants in, uh, in Santos Dumont. Uh, and we also, also got a grant for students' mobility between uh, Chile and, and Uruguay. Obviously, this also came with, uh, with some alcoholic uh, counterparts and, and actually people that I came to know uh, just after the, um, uh, the, the organization. Um, and so this is kind of, uh, when you think about it, I mean, I, I'm sure that the, very much the same is for the people who originally participated in this. Um, I think it's kind of surprising if you think that, again, we are not uh, organized. Indeed, uh, every, every almost, I mean, every time I go to somewhere or speak with somebody, I, I remember I forgot to invite somebody uh, to the group. And, and just this morning, uh, I just realized that uh, Oscar Ventura, I don't know if he's watching or not, he's a, a, a senior scientist here in, here in Uruguay, and just realized he's not in the, in the list, so I just sent him an, an invitation uh, just this morning. Um, so this is just to say that actually it's, there's no kind of, uh, of elitism uh, or, or whatever, just it's completely open and a collaborative uh, initiative uh, that we are just taking over with... Um, uh, with the, the spare time and spare money, we just made it to, to gather uh, from one to time, one time to the other. Uh, the question that came up uh, just recently is, uh, what's next? Um, because if I mean, we can just continue in this in this way, and I think it's being uh, productive, uh, productive enough, I would say. Uh, I know for sure, but I don't know. No, I don't have a quantitative data, but I know for sure that many people have um, been going to do PhDs or postdocs, um, just circulating among our countries, which is, I think, is a, is a great thing, because uh, we have a, a lot of very well trained people uh, leading uh, projects here in, in South America, um, and, and so just staying in, in, in the region or in, in the continent this, uh, uh, can be a good idea, and you can be very competitive. Um, still, uh, of course, with, with much less resources, but not what, with much less uh, ideas or, or uh, academic level. 
Um, so I think it, what's, what's nice is really a discussion about uh, how are, are, and why and, and if we want to grow in a different uh, level of organization. Uh, meanwhile, we were discussing about some small positive actions that I think are it costs nothing and, and it would be uh, would be impactful in, in the in the relatively short uh, period. Uh, the first one is that um, uh, Bruno uh, told me just recently uh, something that th th there is the feeling that Brazilians do not cite Brazilians, and I think it's pretty much the same in in, in the whole country, which is kind of a stupid thing. Um, because, um, I mean, there's no reason why not to uh, cite in, in our papers uh, to, to people who's working in the same area. It's something that we have to keep in mind, saying, I mean, we many times write a paper and just want to provide examples of other people who's doing the same. And when we go to do that, usually we go for the big groups with the big names. But um, it's something that we can very easily do. I mean, uh, if I am writing a sentence saying, I don't know, um, there have been a lot of developments in uh, whatever, um, carbohydrates or, or, uh, or, or, or lipopolysaccharides or stuff like that, perhaps I should not forget that uh, Teresa is working on that. Uh, and just is, and, and the, the research she's doing is as good as uh, anyone else in, in, in the northern uh, hemisphere. Uh, same thing for suggesting um, reviewers uh, when you submit the paper. Uh, always remember to add one of uh, of the people in South America. This uh, eventually will force the, the editor to look for what we are doing here and realizes that we have uh, also a specialist here. And also uh, try to share information through the Twitter accounts, uh, and essentially with uh, with papers and conferences and, and meetings and schools that we are. Um, we are organizing. Uh, with that, I will uh, stop my presentation and we'll hand it to, to Teresa. I hope it was more or less clear. I'm sorry about the, the story of the, of the screen. It's something we will have to manage for the next time. So thank you very much. And uh, I think it's better if we just uh, send every, I mean, all the questions uh, to the next uh, time after the, uh, Teresa's presentation. Okay, so thanks, Sergio. And just saying that if you want to do any question, just comment on the YouTube, and then I can display the, the question here on the screen, as, as you can see. Okay. Okay. Thank and, you very much. Uh, yeah, I believe that uh, this is best. Then uh, a lot of people talking, and I believe it will be the best way to uh, to share your comments and, and your questions. So thank you again, Sergio. You. I will remove you now. Okay, and now Teresa will talk a little bit about the special issue that she uh, responsible to convince the people that uh, Latin America do a, a great job in there and that we, we deserve a special issue. So Teresa, please. So can you hear me and can you see me, Jose, uh, since you are my connection to the, yeah, yeah. the external world? No, Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, I uh, it, and I can see your your screen. Okay. So, uh, so I I would like to start by thank thank you, uh, Jose, for organizing Jose Rafael for organizing uh, this setup for for our discussion. Also, Sergio, who from the beginning has been someone who mobilized the community and has been a, a strong push behind us to, to make it happen. Of course, there are quite a few other people I'm not citing, but of course, uh, it's it's uh, we don't really have like a, a, a core, let's say, a, a central body of coordinators. So it's something that uh, depends a lot on each individual effort to make this uh, uh, community uh, to get stronger and more mature. And I think we are moving forward. So uh, today I, I was asked to say a few words about the special issue we had uh, that was not dedicated only to South America, but it was rather to Latin America. But if we look at the papers submitted there, they are largely from South America. So I think it's quite representative from what we have been doing. Um, I would like to say a few words about uh, JCIM. So this year we had a very 
nice. Uh, I, I, we are all very happy to see that our impact factor uh, jumped quite a bit. So now we are at 4.5, nearly 6, uh, with about a little bit more than 19,000 citations, which is a very important indicative as much as the impact factor. Because sometimes uh, you can have very high impact factors, but you don't publish so many papers. So it's it's always good to look at the two numbers that gives us a better indication uh, on how uh, the, the journal will be projecting itself in the long run. So uh, I also wanted to say that we, we have a very uh, cosmopolitan team. So uh, um, Ken Mertz, I think everybody uh, is familiarized with his work and who knows Kenny knows is a very open mind and very inclusive person. Uh, we also have a very international uh, body of associate editors and we are really uh, pushing for war to, to make the journal a place that is representative, it's inclusive of uh, all, all science in the field of uh, molecular modeling and chemoinformatics. So uh, with that, I will just again, like Sergio mentioned, the very first meeting we had, and I think it was uh, uh, the, the SBBQ meeting, was really a very nice uh, event, and we had time to talk a lot about what worked and what didn't. And one of the discussions we had was the difficulty of finding a place to have the molecular simulation community uh, uh, presenting and you know inviting uh, people that would be uh, talking about issues that we care. Uh, instead of being in some meetings where often we just had to fit in. And uh, this is not to say that we should not be together with other societies, the opposite, we should all work together. But we realize then, and this is a picture that Sergio showed before, uh, or we realize that we have a continent where we prefer, or for, for different reasons, I don't know if prefer is the best word, but we tend to collaborate way more with uh, colleagues in other continents than in Latin America and South America. So uh, we see that this is, uh, is a old data. This is from, from publication 2014. Actually, this is a very nice publication if you have the time, because I think it, it brings a perspective on this, this problem of, of Latin American, but South American countries, most of the time they are facing uh, the ocean and they are looking at each other backwards. I mean, they, they give their backs to each other. And I think because we share so many of the uh, social, economic, political, and of course, cultural, we are culturally very similar. We are we should be working better together because we won't find solutions to our uh, uh, more, uh, let's say, structural problems uh, by just collaborating abroad because, yeah, you, you go, you train people, you come back, and then how do you do once you're here and you don't have the same infrastructure and the, the, the critical mass to discuss and to, to be competitive. So I think it's very important to start from this point. And uh, clearly, we see that there is some connections and uh, in, in the plot, uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but I will point anyway. So you see that there are some main connections here, and one of them is Brazil and Argentina, Brazil and Colombia, um, Argentina and Chile, Uruguay and Chile and Brazil. And this is for science as a whole. It's not a uh, for molecular simulations, but that gives us a, a good idea. And this is the data we had to start from. Now you can say, oh, but this is possible that this is old data, but it's not. Actually, what we see, this is just a paper that came out that's quite interesting, where uh, unfortunately we don't have that much data for South America because they include only countries that will have 0.5% uh, of the uh, scientific output in the world. So this will make up to 41 countries. And here I think we see Brazil and we see Argentina. But what I want to show here is that although we see clearly an increase in the number of authors per 
papers in the world. We also see an increase in, in terms of number of institutions and regions. This is a much, much lower, or let's say uh, the increase is, is less significant than it is for the uh, number of, of authors per manuscript. So uh, we all agree that uh, uh, we need to cooperate we need to establish international uh, cooperation so that we are more um, uh, effective in addressing problems that are becoming more and more uh, complex than it used to be before. But it's not easy, even for, uh, let's say, countries that are well established in terms of research that ha have uh, good investment, good infrastructure, and a long tradition of scientific research. So this is really something that is very challenging, and I think we should be proud that we are trying to, to find our own solutions, and I hope Sam is going to be part of this, uh, this uh, effective way of looking at the problem. So now, uh, in terms of uh, publications, uh, we see that we this is uh, all the material I'm sharing here, most of it uh, are available uh, uh, in, in the two papers I cite here. Those were the editorial uh, to the special issue. So um, those numbers show, show, uh, that I show here, they, they are representative of the number of publications where we can find molecular simulation and we have the names of uh, Latin American countries searched on uh, Web of Science. So as we can see, we are publishing more right, in, in, in molecular simulation. So it means that we do have a, a larger community. But if we bring these numbers uh, together with the fact that we tend to not collaborate so much with uh, other colleagues in South America, we realize that this might, uh, let's say we could get better numbers here working together. But this is a positive thing. We do have a community and we do have critical mass on, on, on the subject of molecular simulation. Now, if we look at the uh, number of contributions before our special issue on, on JCIM, we were in not very good position. So uh, as you can see, uh, compared to other countries, we are mostly uh, publishing less than, I don't know, I, I don't have the number by heart, but it's probably less than, uh, I think, 5% of what we see published throughout the years on uh, JCA. So, so the argument is that, uh, it would be interesting for JCAM to attract uh, our community, more people from South America to help to produce good science, to bring uh, good uh, publications to JCAM. And I think for us, this would be a good opportunity also to, to find a place where we know we are treated in a fair way, that we are given proper assessment of our work. So that should work nicely for the two sides. Now, with respect to the uh, special issue, uh, we had uh, about 60 accepted contributions. I mean, actually, this is larger than 60 because not all the papers, uh, I mean, some people submitted uh, after the deadline, others, uh, the feedback of reviewers and all the interactions to uh, to leave the, the, the manuscript in a final uh, format that was suitable for publication took a little bit longer. So we had more than six, 60 publications because some of them came later. Uh, we had about 12% uh, of those publications with two, um, with institutional address in, in more than one country. So this is it's not so high, actually, 12%. I don't consider this a, a very high number. And uh, <clears throat> within this 12%, we had uh, less than 17% of, of those contributions being uh, by two or more groups in different countries in, in Latin America. So 
uh, I think Argentina and Chile, they are the major payers because uh, Argentina and Chile had about eight papers and they were uh, in 33.3 of, of, of about 43%, they were joint contributions. Uh, looking at Brazil, which had about 33 papers, we had l about 9.1% of shared authorships with uh, colleagues in, in, in Latin America. So I think we see clearly that uh, even if the data I showed in the first, in the second slide is no longer up to date, I, I think this trend that we still don't work together as much as we could remains. So I think this is something that we should be uh, looking into as you know, we try to construct this uh, community. In terms of uh, research topics, I think we, we covered a lot of, of subjects. Of course, we had more papers in certain topics than others, I, this is natural, but we were able to cover uh, from software uh, development to computational tools, whether it was web-based or like a standalone mode, uh, code that could be downloaded and, and run on your own machine. We had uh, several applications uh, and then we cover uh, from atomic to quantum to uh, coarse grain. And we also had a large spectrum uh, of uh, systems. Uh, so I would say mostly biomolecules also because this is very much the nature of uh, what we see uh, at the JCAM, but we had quite a few papers on soft matter and even uh, materials, non-biological materials. So, so these, uh, we had quite a few physicists also contributing to this uh, issue. Uh, we had mostly uh, MD simulations, some Monte Carlo simulations, and uh, quite a few flavors uh, of MG, so QMMM, free energy calculations. Uh, on the QM, we had uh, some few contributions on GFT, semi-empirical, quite a few work. Uh, we, we had uh, quite a few people from the, uh, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to say the proper name of the, but we, we, we have the community of the drug design in Brazil, and they have a very large meeting. Uh, and, and that community, uh, which I think might not be uh, also at, at SAMES, uh, this is maybe a, a group we would like to, uh, to be in touch and, and bring them to collaborate also to construct uh, SAMES together with us. But the drug design community in Brazil is quite strong. They, they, they were very supportive of this uh, special issue. And we also had a few, I think maybe two manuscripts, uh, on machine learn applied to drug design and material modeling. So this is also something that uh, I hope we are gonna see more people doing in Brazil based on the number of uh, material we have received uh, lately in JCIM. So this is pretty much what I had to say about the uh, special issue. Uh, I'll be very happy uh, to answer questions on G's and also I think uh, we might uh, uh, make another meeting if you you guys think this might be uh, helpful, but we could have uh, meetings where we can discuss a bit more what we need in terms of reviewers, how we can become better reviewers, or what we look for when people are submitting manuscripts. I would be happy to talk about this too, uh, within the possibilities of uh, my expertise is also limited. I just would like to, to, to conclude it a little bit. I'd like to say that uh, we have numbers here and we do have problems that are perhaps a little bit beyond what we as community can do. Uh, and I don't want to show uh, those numbers uh, so that we feel uh, not so positive about things, but I maybe I spent too many years in, in German culture and I tend to be very pragmatic about those things. I think we need to be aware of the problems uh, before we can find the best solutions. And I think clearly uh, we are in a situation where we 
do not have the same number of scientists as other countries uh, in developed, uh, let's say, in the uh, developed world. So we are fewer and we deal with less resource. So why I say that? I say that because uh, I think if we want to find the right solutions for our problems, we need to think about new solutions. Uh, it's not uh, what people do in Germany, what, what people do in China, what people do in the US might not be uh, the best solution for us because we have a very different situation. I mean, it's not just culturally that we are distinct, but we deal with another um, a framework of funding and of a critical mass. So I think uh, I wanted to say this uh, so that we might bring this data into the discussion and we try to find, to use, I think we are a very creative, vibrant community. And I think if we have been doing science uh, for all the, the, the last decades under all the difficulties we, we have, I think we should be able to, uh, let's say, prevail at some point. I don't know how long it's going to take. But I think it's not possible to have this type of discussion, uh, ignoring uh, what are our periodic boundary conditions. So this has to be taken into the picture. But to not finish the talk in a negative note, I like very much this um, saying in, in Latin. I'm not uh, going to pronounce it because I don't speak Latin. So, but the translation would be nothing is heavy for those who have wings and i think we do have wings and with that i'd like to uh thank you all for being here and for being willing to uh build up this nice community with me sergio jose guilherme and everybody else i didn't mention names here okay thank you so much okay so Thank you very much, Teresa, for this really nice talk and for bringing all these subjects. subjects. Uh, just saying that uh, if anyone have any questions or comments, can just ask on YouTube, and then I will include here in the, in the screen. Uh, also, uh, while people are typing the questions, I want to to bring the the uh, okay, not the issue, but the, the question about our next seminar. Uh, we are talking in perhaps in the first or second week of September. I don't know if you, uh, Sergio and Teresa, agree, and if everyone agree. And also, uh, uh, we can discuss if this uh, seminar will be given only by the PIs or if you open to PG students of talk. And the, uh, uh, I, I will say that this idea from Teresa uh, to say about what the editors want is really nice. I believe that this can be a talk, or this should be a talk. I don't know what, what Sergio thinks, uh, thinks or and everyone else. And well, I'm now open for comments, for questions. Mm -hmm. If anyone wants to enter in the stream yard, now we have a few slots. So if you want to talk, we can just enter and and talk a little bit. Just a small comment, uh, since I am. Uh, uh, it's just uh, just to rem to remind or just to tell people who was not uh, in, in the previous uh, conversation we had. Uh, it seems to be that uh, Monday morning is a good day, like, like this, this time we are doing now. It's a good day for almost everybody to uh, to watch or, or, or prepare a presentation. Um, we also agreed that uh, we could have something like once in a month or something like that. So if we start, as you say, uh, Rafael, um, on, I don't know, the first Monday every month, um, we should have a, a, a having two presentations. Uh, then we could have like uh, eight or, or ten uh, presentations with, even within this year, uh, right? Yeah. So um, yeah. I would I don't know how to how to do, uh, but I think a good idea would be just people sending their names and, and titles to the list 
and do, we just try to organize something. I don't know exactly how or, or perhaps a doodle or something like that, uh, because I'm sure that we are going to have a lot of uh, volunteers. And uh, no, I don't think we should limit this to the PIs. Um, perhaps we, we, we also could exclude the PIs from the presentation. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, uh, I think it would be better uh, if we had uh, like um, PhD students and, and postdocs. But this is just my opinion. Um, I don't know, but I, I think it, it could be good if we decide to start like um, the next, the, the, the first Monday in September and then October, November and December. It's um, um, this is it's already a good number, and then we can see what happens with the. Uh, yeah, how, how uh, and the first Monday of September will be a uh, holiday here in Brazil. Is the seventh okay. September, so well we are in, uh, in the home office and this quarantine like so. For me, Sunday or Monday is the same stuff. So. <laughs> It would be no problem, and yeah, I agree with the idea that put the the young people to, to talk. Okay, so here, yeah, uh, so just saying that Dario said that young know, people would be great, and Bruno thinks that we don't have to impose restrictions. PI or students are welcome. Yeah, so for me. I believe that, that uh, yeah, we can open for everyone. So who wants to talk, just send uh, to, to the mail list um, a title and a, and we can try to arrange everything in a, in the next day. So it would be if small talks, like 20 minutes, perhaps, like today, 20 minutes, uh, uh, two talks, uh, one talk of 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes to question, Another twenty, another talk with twenty minutes, more ten minutes to, to question, and then we will not be so heavy. It's something that we can discuss, and also I believe that the uh, this idea of uh, the comments on YouTube and share it on, on the screen will be better than a lot of people talking. I don't know if you agree, mm -hmm. because if you have right now ten or twenty people uh, talking, will be a uh, really mess, and. Uh, just uh, yes, Marcelo. We will have all these uh, talks in the YouTube channel, so we just have to. You, you, you can access later the the YouTube and, and watch this again. So, yeah. Know, also, because of the, of the local holidays, which will be different in in our countries. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think perhaps we shouldn't stop doing the seminars because of the holidays, because uh, we'll have different holidays everywhere, everywhere and most likely yeah, we'll yeah, have. I agree. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, great. Uh, so, there's a few people that want to contribute. So, um, I believe that uh, so the students can talk with the PIs, uh, with the supervisor, and then send an email to, to the list, or perhaps they can send an email to me, and then mm -hmm. I try to arrange this. Yeah. yeah. OK, so I will put my email here in the comments, and also I'll put the Gmail that I believe is easier. Okay, So you can send the, uh, the email to me, or, or you can ask in the Twitter and here on YouTube. Uh, I'm planning to also create a Instagram and Facebook account. I believe that we can explore all the social social medias, and we should explore all the social medias also. Okay. So, any extra comments from Teresa or Sergio or anyone? The, uh, the, watching. No, I think that I'm fine with the idea of uh, not pre-selecting in the sense that I mean I think anyone who wants to talk should should be able to but of course it would be very nice to have uh, more junior uh, members because then we get to know uh, what you know people who maybe we don't know I mean I know Sergio for a while I know other people for a while but there are quite a few uh, younger members that uh, I'm not 
connected to. So I think this would be a good opportunity. And also because I think uh, it creates an environment where uh, we can share train and share i think that was also one of the main points you wanted in the beginning right because we wanted to uh we don't have a large critical mass so this can be an opportunity uh if i work with something that someone else has a complementary expertise uh let's say if someone in my group wants to talk it's a good opportunity for someone to say oh but we do this here in a let's say <laughs> faster way so we can collaborate so i think it's very very important to make it inclusive for everybody but try to push the uh younger members to to be the the majority of these speakers great and also uh, i was thinking that perhaps we can uh combine some uh research uh uh, divulgation or someone talking about uh, is research and uh, other topics like Teresa talking about uh, uh, talking not as research but as editor and perhaps we can ask for other people talk about other issues in the science community like women's science uh, uh, gender cases ra uh, racism and this kind of stuff so we know that this is a problem that, uh, we are discussing this a lot so we can invite people from the minorities to perhaps talk and also i don't know uh, uh, another uh, question that that we have that we can ask someone to to talk for for the community i don't know what you think uh, yes um uh, before coming to that um, because i will forget uh something that i will ask to the everybody who, who holds a presentation is to include the first slide with the, their own name uh, and the, the name of the group where they are and the general expertise they have in the in the group and some of them yeah, the yeah. main projects or, or interest this is because it has to 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 get each other to know uh, who we are where we are perhaps even the, the resources you have or, or the, the main interests uh, of the group um that could be something i mean something to keep in mind because um beyond going to the um, uh, i mean to, to the presentation and the the, the real code of the science i think all this initiative was something that was created around the the, the idea of getting to know who's doing the who, what in the next door uh, or, or in the next country or, or stuff like that um so it's, i think it's interesting to know i mean um for me it was interesting to know that for for instance you rafael we're working on stuff which is more or less similar to what we do, and you are really close to here. I mean, in, in between yeah. Pelotas and, and Montevideo. Yeah. And I, honestly, before I didn't know that you were working on that. Um, and this yeah. kind of I'm closer you know, to you than I'm from Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> for, for instance, for so sure. uh, just that I would say should be mandatory to add a, one slide saying, "Okay, I am Sergio Pantano. I work at the Institute Pasteur of Montevideo." And, and I'm, in my group, we do this or, or, or that. Something that actually I didn't do this this time, but um, because it was, was another topic. But uh, I think it's something which is important, and uh, just to helping us to, to create a map of possible interactions with other people. And about the other thing you the other thing you mentioned, uh, I have nothing against. Just wondering. But we, we may not be there yet, but at a certain point, somebody will could feel uncomfortable with with some of the concepts about not not not, not directly in science. And this is something that we, we mentioned. We should try to work on, on the which are which, which we believe are the, um, the, 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 the vision and, and the mission of the group and, and which are the, the objectives and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, it's just to avoid that, I, I, I present seminars with uh, things that are not interesting. I mean, I, I could show you pictures about myself cooking or, or whatever, but it's yeah, not yeah. A, really is not an interest of most of the people. Um, no, so, so I, yes, I say, in general, I will leave it to the free, but eventually we will have to get to a discussion of what we are really. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. think also there are quite a few societies promoting these uh, discussions. I mean, in Brazil, it's now is basically uh, you have like every day basically 
uh, webinars on, on those subjects. So I think maybe we are such a small group that if we don't focus, we might end up uh, sort of alienating a little bit part of the community. So I would also okay. agree that it's okay. better to keep I, I just wanted to to bring this because this uh, mm -hmm. everyone is talking about this. So I, I would like yeah. to to see what our community w uh, was thinking. So yeah, I, I I totally agree that we are a small community and that we, we can focus on molecular simulations. Mm -hmm. But I want just to push a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we have so, questions about the presentations? Uh, did anyone? Yeah. Apparently no. Apparently the presentation were so good that anyone had any questions. Well, well, it was not complicated thing either. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so I believe that if you don't have any questions, we can start to to close. Yeah. So just I do have a question just for everybody to know: How many people are we? I mean, counting the 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 string yard and, and the youtube because you can see it and i cannot yeah yeah uh right now uh we are 43 people watching on the youtube but we had up to 52 was the the maximum not bad mm -hmm. yeah yeah so I, I take the opportunity to remember uh, everybody to to fill up the documents that um, um bruno put online uh, with the data and a, and a picture of the, of the people and uh, and where we are and so on. Um, because I, I just checked and there are not so many. I mean, we are 50 people in the in the or, or more in the mailing list, and I think there's like 10 or 12. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just too many. Yeah. Up. Yeah. And yeah, maybe we, another thing that we should try to see if, if we can get the website more comprehensive i mean i don't think yeah. it's bad i think uh, there are quite some information there that may be useful but maybe we could have it uh, more complete with i mean I, as people fill up this uh, document created by bruno we could use the document to feed yeah. the site i think that might be a little bit of a push for some people to uh, the, 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 the doc because there uh, we could also put links to the different groups. I think it makes the the, the, the same idea more dynamic and, and more uh, concrete, right? I mean, we are not just like this name. We are actually people with research groups, with students, with, you know, so uh, that could be something that uh, I don't know who is the person doing this, Sergio. I, I remember there was someone Responsible. Don't know either. Nobody, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So maybe, think, uh, maybe we... Tomás Pérez Acle uh, is the one, and is the administrator of the page. Okay. Uh, yeah. He should have access. I so don't know maybe if we he, should try uh, to 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 mobilize him. Uh, ask him yeah. to, to help <laughs> us yeah. once again. Uh, we promise him that uh, if he does this once more, we are going to find someone else to, to keep <laughs> doing. So that might be a good motivation. But I think this would be something nice to... Also, I think it's very important to keep the address. I said that in the last meeting. Mm, but yeah. because now we are sending this info yeah. and saying something that has been registered in published documents. So I think we should try to keep as much as possible the, the address. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Uh, okay, and uh, now we have some questions uh, popping up. So the first one is from Marcelo De Polo. He's asking, where can we find this form for the mailing list? I don't know who, uh, Sergio, you is the owner of the mailing list. Uh, I think Guilherme was the, is the owner, um, uh, but I was promoted to, to administrator. Uh, and if you can send me an email, I will invite you. I think it only requires a Gmail address. Uh, and you, what you will see on the mailing list is essentially very few information. It's not something uh, firing spam uh, every time. It's like you will get uh, like a one email at, at most in the in the month or, or something like that. It's just about advertising um, uh, for for um, fellowships or or conferences we are organizing or stuff like that. Not not much. Uh, it's not a big bar. I mean, it's, it's not going to 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 become a spam. This is the idea. <laughs> okay. 
So if you want to go uh, to be in the mail list, just send an email to Sergio. And yes. also, Fernando or Guilherme. Nilo, uh, or Guilherme, yeah. And Fernando Nilo asks, uh, oh, sorry, this is not the, the proper one, it's this one. What about mm. the Latin America contribution based on the immediate to the research of Sarkov? I believe that Sergio is, can say something about this. Once he, the CIHA uh, group is working hard on it. So. Uh, well, thank you. I'm not so sure. No, what we did was um, uh, um, we started an initiative to, to run a course grain simulation of all the, the molecules, all the proteins within the, the viral proteome. And, uh, and we uploaded the simulation on, on Zenodo. Uh, actually, we are not mm, truly virologists and certainly not coronavirologists. Um, but yes, I mean, it's, it's a good idea. I think in one way or the other, we are all working about that. Um, could It could be something. I mean, we, perhaps the, the, the best thing would be kind of thinking in, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, perhaps another special issue or, or trying to convince somebody um, about that. Uh, it is also true that there are a lot of, uh, I'm not saying that we produce trash, but there is a lot of trash about coronavirus uh, in the literature these days. So I'm, I'm not sure if it will be easy to, to convince, and perhaps this is a question for Teresa, uh, I'm not sure it would be easy to convince uh, an editorial board to create uh, just an issue for us about uh, coronavirus. I like the idea, though, but um, uh, perhaps... Actually, we uh, I think uh, JCAM, you have a special issue, of course, not just for South Americans, but for, for the world. Uh, and I think it's uh, Romy, who is the... Um, editor, associated editor responsible for that. I mean, we are discussing this, so I think it, it I mean, I, I think people are discussing the possibilities, so that might happen, though I think my, this is, I know I'm not talking about an editor or anything like this, I'm talking as just Teresa. Uh, I think it's becoming a little bit tricky because we have seen so many uh, retractions uh, of manuscripts. I mean, I, I'm talking about we like the magical community, but also I think we didn't see really like any great breakthrough come with uh, molecular simulation. So in this in this uh, system, so I don't know if this is something easy. Uh, but uh, if uh, JCAM moves forward with this idea, I don't know if it sort of died. I, I will let you guys know. Good. Great. So guys, uh, I don't know if you have any more questions. I wait because Bruno said that I have a question, but I don't, uh, I, I'm just asking if he wants to ask the question on YouTube or, or live, I'm just waiting. Okay. And also perhaps in the I just have the idea for the next seminars in the first week of September. Perhaps w once, uh, okay, Bruno canceled the, uh, the question, mm -hmm. but um, one of the talks be about some works related to, to, to COVID. I don't know what guys, what you guys think, but since this is a hot topic, we can at least one of the of the talks be about uh, SARS-CoV-2 and how we as community and as researchers using molecular simulations can co contribute to this case or to, to this problem. Yeah. Okay, this idea. Okay, Marco is my undergraduate student. Yeah. This could be a good idea. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking about the, the what is now on the screen, uh, Marco Sonasco. Um, yeah. Yes, I mean, we have been considering the idea of creating some tutorials for the stuff we do, for people just to set up a course going simulation and stuff like that. So it, it would be, I would be happy to include this in, in the YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah uh, because I, I know that in the CHA web page you have these uh, tutorials. I'm also uh, forcing my students to create GitHubs. So Marco is one of, of my students. So 
he create a GitHub in, and showing how uh, it's making the simulations, and we can start to, to create small video for our channel on YouTube with t tutorials as, as well. I believe it's not so hard to, to do. No, oh, it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I don't know if you have any more questions, but we already passed one hour of, of the webinar. Mm -hmm. Our idea is to remain in one hour because we have a lot of stuff to do. Okay, so once again, I want to thank you, Teresa and Sergio, for these nice talks. Thanks for everyone that, that, uh, that is watching, around 50 people, where well, it's more or less the size of the <laughs> of our community, mm -hmm. 50 and something, right? So almost everyone is here. And also I can see so, some students, what's so really great, really nice to, uh, to see here. So thank you guys. Thank for everyone that, that's watching. Thank you. So thank you. and yeah. Teresa, I don't know if you want to make some concluding remarks. No. no. Well, I would like to thank you actually for organizing all this, for putting this together, because uh, I guess this has been some work. And then, of course, Sergio and the, all the public for being there, listening, and then coming up with questions, suggestions. Okay, great, guys. So please send uh, send me an email with a uh, title of your talk, perhaps a short uh, abstract, like one or two lines, not normal, no more than this. And see you in a few weeks. Okay. Bye. Bye bye and thanks. Bye bye, guys.